This video is filmed before a live audience. This video is also sponsored by the good folks at Baron Mini. The Mini Convertible, probably one of the best ways I can think of to enjoy the sun and a car with a unique history. Now, I'm not just referring to the unique history of the Mini, but rather the convertible itself. The convertible goes back much further than 2005. Not that far. It actually goes back to 1991. In 1991, Rover commissioned Lamb Auto House of Germany to build 75 cabriolets utilizing the original, or what we would call the classic Mini. The car proved so popular that they ordered an additional 25 of them, meaning they only had 100 of these cars. It is an incredibly rare vehicle, and I don't think all 100 survived today. With the success of the Lamb Cabriolet, Rover decided in 1993 to release their own in-house convertible. The car was double the price of a standard Mini, which, if you think about it in today's terms, is insane. But it was a fairly popular car. When BMW introduced the first generation of their Mini, they planned a convertible as well. Since Mini had a convertible as early as 1991, it seemed only fitting. Fast forward to the present day, and we have three generations of the modern Mini Cooper convertible. They all share the unique and sometimes unfortunate qualities of their hardtop siblings but each generation is loved by its owners and enthusiasts. We begin this week's episode with the first generation of the modern Mini convertible, otherwise known as the R52. This vehicle debuted in the summer of 2004 following its unveiling at the Geneva Motor Show. The R52, available in supercharged and naturally aspirated form, and with manual or automatic transmissions, would continue to be built up until August of 2008, two years after its siblings, the R50 and R53, had been replaced by the R56. This is a 2005 early build R52 Cooper convertible. So this is a chili red 2005 Mini Cooper convertible. This is one of the early ones. Lots of red. And there's also some red metallic fleck in the A panels and most of the trim on the car, which is kind of unique. I've never seen that actually, except on this one. Exposed hinges for the hatch, or for the tailgate. Now you notice it says John Cooper works. Well, that is because this has the John Cooper Works sound kit. Now what that includes looks like a trim panel, intake, and maybe exhaust? Go around to the back. Yep, it has an exhaust. John Cooper Works exhaust, that's cool. Lots of chrome. This owner likes her chrome. Even chrome strut tower braces to prevent the strut towers from mushrooming. Uh, not strut tower braces, strut tower defenders. Chrome cowl vents. Even chrome on this, that's interesting. Lots of chrome. Now this is what they call an LCI or life cycle impulse. And what they basically did for the 2005 model year is they changed the headlights to these and they removed that bevel or raised panel look in the grill trim and replaced it with a smooth trim. If you go around back, they also changed the tail lights and put the reverse light up in the tail light. And then down here where this blank is, you can also have a fog light. Inside the car, they had a three spoke steering wheel instead of the two spoke that they had in the early ones. This owner also has the early mini navigation system by Garmin, which is kind of cool actually. I've never seen that before. But all the general toggle switches, you don't have fog lights in. Well, I don't know what toggle, I think the DSC is missing from this toggle and I think the rear fog is missing from this one, but otherwise all 
pretty nice setup actually and if we start it see you actually have a key to start this car and if we start it you have a very nice drone coming out the tailpipe This owner also has some nice decal additions, including this dragon, so she must have been on the dragon at some point. Harman Kardon sound system, a very important thing. It's a must-have, I think, if you want a great stereo in these minis. This is kind of cool. It's a red, black, and silver Union Jack. Kind of a neat detail. Some more chrome accents. She loves her chrome. This is a wind deflector that you put in the back seat to reduce the wind noise in the car. And it's also handy if you don't have any back seat passengers, so that's a good thing to have. These also, compared to the next generations of the convertible, have fixed in place rollover bars. So in case you flipped one of these, which is a little difficult to do, but if you did, you have these rollover bars here to protect you. So this car has the JCW sound kit. Now what that included was an ECU reflash, an exhaust, and an intake. So all the stuff to give you a nice sound out of this car. Now if you did notice when I went through and did a little walk around of the car, it has an automatic transmission. That is the CVT transmission that there is a class action lawsuit on. It's been known to fail and people have complained about it for over a decade now. But it really depends on the car. Not all of them have had serious issues. This one in particular has not had issues, unlike some of the other ones. But it's something to look at if you're going to buy a Cooper, because they had the CVT transmission. So if you are going to buy a Cooper and you want to get an automatic, just know that there isn't. There might be an issue with the CVT. There might not be an issue with the CVT. It's really a matter of how well the car was maintained and if that particular transmission happened to be one that failed. So I hope you enjoyed this little walk around of the R52 Mini Convertible. Join me next week when I introduce you to the second generation of the Mini Cooper Convertible, the R57. Until next time, remember, life is too short to drive a boring car, so buy a Mini. I'll catch you later.